Hello, it's Dr. Me here, and we are preparing to work another actuarial problem. So the amount of gas burned by a given car in a week can be modeled by a continuous random variable with density f of x. If another car burns twice as much fuel in a given week, find the density of the gas burned of the less fuel efficient car. So sometimes these actuarial problems, I have to say, are not necessarily abundantly clear but you have to work with what you have. So here the situation is basically uh, you have to interpret this as a transformation problem. If the one given car burns X amount of fuel, okay, then the other car, less efficient car, will burn twice as much. Okay, so we know what the density of X is and we just need to find the density of, of 2X. We'll actually work that out a little formally over here. So the first trick here is to understand that this is a transformation problem. So we're given the density of one random variable and we need to find the density of another random variable and uh, where the transformation is just twice the original random variable. And as I like to do, always give you a fact. So here the fact is something that I really wouldn't recommend uh, memorizing. It's something that it, it is valid and it may have value but it's not very intuitive. So if you do have time to memorize it, go ahead. I would rather derive this uh, density directly using first principles. We'll do it two ways. Okay, so we, let's lay out some foundations here. I like to use black. That works. So let's let x equal to uh, fuel used by the first car by the fuel efficient car. That's when we're modeling it after there. And that's per week, right? And what the problem is saying is that we have another car that burns twice as much fuel. So another random variable where if the car, you can think of it driving the exact same route that the other car drove, say, during that week, and it just happens to be burn exactly twice the amount, okay? So that's the random variable. It's actually defined as twice the amount. So this is the fuel used by the less efficient car. We'll just say by other car. Now we want to f find the density of y. Okay, that's really the the meat of this problem is we're given x, we have its density in general given as f of x, and we'd like to find the density of y. It's a very common problem in, in probabilities to find the density of a transformed random variable. Okay, let's, let's go to our fact here. So our random variable y is equal to g of x. So there's our transformation, g of x. So actually, g of x here is equal to 2 of x, or 2x, sorry, which is equal to, that's our y, right? And so what we need to find then, we have f of x, that's given to us in a general form, it's just f of x. Uh, we need to find g inverse y. So this implies that x, which is equal to our g inverse y, so inverse function here is equal to y over 2. y over 2. Simple enough. We just solve for one variable. And generally, uh, you know, I always like to add little comments here. Uh, on these actuarial tests, they're not trying to trick you on the algebra. Okay, that will generally be simple. They're just trying to test your knowledge of, of transformations. Okay, so don't let the triviality of this uh, confuse you or, or make you think that the, it's, it needs to be harder than it really is. Okay, uh, so using the formula, you're, you're almost done. You have g inverse y, f of x is given. Now you just need the derivative of y of g inverse y. So the derivative is given as follows. It's just one half, right? Simple enough. Okay. Now we put it all together. Our new density y, which is the density of our f the fuel used by the the other car, which is the less fuel efficient car, and we'll be formal about this and put f of y there. Y then is going to be equal to our. I'm I'm just applying this formula here. F of x, which is our original density, just f evaluated at at g inverse y, which is y over 2, 
and then times the absolute value of the derivative of g inverse y. Okay, so that's just a constant, so we don't need absolute value sign. And we're essentially done. Okay, it's that quick. Uh, so you can see this problem could be solved very, very quickly. Obviously, I was uh, I'm doing a video here to to show you how to work it, but um, you can really run through these pretty quickly. But be careful when you do the arithmetic, especially simple uh, manipulations like this, because they'll also give answers that correspond to doing algebra incorrectly, um, just to trick you up. And let's now do it another way. Uh, I'll flip the page here. And where you don't really need to know fact. Again, if you have time, memorize fact. It's good to know. Have in the back pocket, you know, never good. I mean, it's always good to have that. And so I always like the cumulative distribution function method um, of, of transformations. Here, you're, you want to find the first the cumulative distribution function of f of y. So it's big F of y. Okay. And that's just equal to the probability that y, okay, the y that we have defined on the previous page is less than or equal to some uh, some y. This way this way you don't have to memorize the formula and plus you're used to actually doing uh, calculations as opposed to just memorizing these tricks. And so that's our that's what that's what we're looking for. First the cumulative distribution function of y and then we'll take the derivative to actually get the density. Okay, these are always fun. So we already defined y, right, to equal to 2x. Okay, so this is just the probability that uh, y is now, this is, you always do the same steps. 2x is less than or equal to y, and then you solve for x here. Because we know what the cumulative distribution function, well, in principle we know what the cumulative distribution function of x is. So this is then just the probability that let me do that a little better there. X is less than or equal to Y over 2. Okay, but this is the cumulative distribution function of X because the only thing we have here is X. So this is equal to F, and I'm just going to just be really clear, F of big X evaluated at Y over 2. Okay, if they already if they had asked for the cumulative distribution function of the random variable y would be done, but they didn't. They asked for the PDF. So we know how to get the PDF. We just take the derivative of our of our CDF. So f of y then, and I'll write it this way, is just equal to the derivative in terms of y of our big F of x evaluate at y over 2. Okay, which is equal to our original f that was given on the other page, so I won't put f of x, it's understood that's x, evaluated at y over 2. And we're using the chain rule now, so derivative of the outside times the derivative of the argument times 1 half. And so we get the exact same answer. And there you go. Thank you.